If you've somehow never heard of Big Eye Small Mouth, Besom for short, it's a generic setting game from the 90s that was made as a passion project by some folks who really loved Japanese animation. In my earlier days of tabletop role-playing games, it was sometime after the third edition of Big Eye Small Mouth came out that Guardians of Order folded. This game then became something of a holy grail of mine, mostly because I was, and still am, a piece of weeaboo trash. Slap anime in the description, and I would go nuts over it. Thankfully, I grew out of that reflex, and realized there's actually just a very specific kind of show I like, and Japan at one point put out a lot of that kind of show. It's shows about nothing, shows like Seinfeld or King of the Hill if you want American examples. And even though I did eventually find a bunch of the old Besom books, physically and digitally, I eventually grew disillusioned with it. Sure, it was easier to pick up than Hero, my favorite game of the time, but it was also way easier to break over your knee because it had a lot of balance issues. It made for a pretty unfun experience. And then when 2013 came around and there was a whole slew of RPGs from Japan getting translated and published in English, I pretty much didn't need Big Eye Small Mouth anymore. That said, it somehow came back for a fourth edition, and since Mark McKinnon is making RPGs again, he's also decided that there needs to be an animeified version of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. So, this one is going to be a double feature, actually. We're going to take a brief look at Big Eye Small Mouth 4th edition, as well as the less creatively named anime 5th edition. Let's get this physical manifestation of the sunk cost fallacy over with already. For the curious sorts who never seen or experienced Big Eye Small Mouth and want to know what kind of rules it has, allow me a brief overview. It uses two six-sided dice, and you add various relevant modifiers to any roll you make, aiming to get higher than a given target number or opposing dice roll. Most often, one of your character's three stats, and a relevant skill if they have one, and maybe some situational modifiers because of tools or the environment. The three stats are body, mind, and soul, and are pretty self-explanatory. Your physical abilities, your mental abilities, and abilities that require force of will or the universe loving you more than anybody else. For example, a character trying to survive drinking bleach would roll two six-sided dice, add their body stat, and compare it to a number determined by the game master. If they've got a body rating of 2, and the GM says that their target number is 24, we can pretty safely assume this unfortunate soul either needs some sort of superhuman ability, or will die horribly, seeing how there's no way to get 24 with two six-sided dice, even if you add 2 to the end result. Unusual traits, like being able to imbibe cleaning chemicals without harm, are represented by attributes, which attributes make up the meat of Big Eye's small mouth. In fact, making your character in Big Eye Small Mouth is, mechanically, very simple. You have a certain amount of points, and you can spend them to raise your stats and gain anything from a massive list of traits and attributes way too long for me to go over here. It's a very open-ended game, and my explanation is a little reductionist, but for the most part, that is Big Eye Small Mouth. Starting with Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition, the most apt description I can give it is this. It's what Big Eye Small Mouth 3rd Edition should have been, but for various reasons, couldn't be. For starters, the target numbers scale the same, 6 being the easiest recommended difficulty number, and 24 being the most challenging. In fact, most of the general rules remain the same between the two, but the presentation is a little bit different. Although, some of the numbers and details, such as the cost of certain attributes, as well as the list of attributes that are available, did change between editions. The information is also presented in a less verbose manner. There's brief summaries in addition to text blocks explaining things. So to reiterate, Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition is more or less what 3rd should have been, had things not gone horribly wrong towards the end of Guardians of Order's operations. Worth noting is that there's a version of Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition called Besom 4E Naked. It's a stripped down version of the standard rulebook with most of the exposition cut out. And there's also numerous splat books for Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition. As is the modus operandi of Mark McKinnon. When he publishes something, he makes as many additional things for it as humanly possible. There's even mention for other books with more optional rules available, 
just in case you feel that Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition needs a little bit more oomph. As I said at the beginning though, I have a double feature for you. Let's talk about Anime 5th Edition. That is literally what the next book we're going to talk about is called. This one is going to be good. Anime 5e is more or less what the title implies though. An anime themed version of Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. Conveniently with no mention of Dungeons and Dragons, but plenty of smiles, winks, and nods. It overhauls some of the rules, making it quasi-point by, and also adding a lot of new classes and races. The drawback, though, is that this led to some particularly strange design choices. For one, by the rules as written, you still must roll for your ability scores. Then you add them up and make sure they're not over a certain threshold. The threshold being points that you have for customizing your character. If it is, you either need to take some defects to make up the difference or lower your stats. It kind of begs the question of why bothering for rolling for stats in the first place. But I digress. Anime 5e also tries to find a way to balance all the classes that it creates using point by logic. Which, in theory, I can get behind this since it makes creating new such races and classes and balancing them a little bit easier. However, it does provide a much steeper learning curve, regardless of whether you want to keep it vanilla or not. Anime 5e's design choices lead to a lot of trade-offs that make it at once familiar and foreign to anybody who is thinking it's D&D 5th edition, but animeified. I hate that term. My original thought was that multi-classing would be as much of a headache in Anime 5e as it was in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but that wasn't the case. Basically, in Anime 5e, there's only two things you need to keep track of. First is the individual level for all the classes that you take, since you add them up to come up with your character level, much like in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Second, you need to keep an eye out for any duplicate proficiencies your new class gives you. If that class you're picking up starts with one you've already got, you instead get a few extra points, depending on what the duplicate was, per this handy little chart. And that's it. Which honestly surprised me, since this is one of the things that's actually made easier than in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. In Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, you also had to calculate your character's spellcaster level, as well as determine what new proficiencies you might get based on a chart for what class you were picking up. Assuming you even could multi-class, since getting a new class in D&D 5e had minimum attribute requirements. I'm inclined to say that Anime 5e increases the learning curve compared to Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, but also causes it to plateau a little bit sooner, as many point-by or level and point-by hybrid games are wont to do. Mathematical differences can make a game more challenging to get into, but once learned, they never change just like how 2 plus 2 will always equal 4. On the one hand, I can appreciate how through both of these, much of the logic and mathematics behind the design is explained. Seeing the internal logic is one thing I did like about Big Eye Small Mouth 3rd Edition, and I like that it makes a return in 4th Edition. In fact, Besom 4e also adds a lot of concise reiterations of various rules, so a quick glance can give a reminder of how a rule works or a calculation is made. They're not hidden inside walls of text. And at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I do think that Besom 4th Edition is what 3rd Edition should have been, but couldn't be. And as a segue to the next part, I'm going to spend a tick talking about something I'm ambivalent about. A decent part of the book takes time explaining what anime is, and some of its common tropes. I find that kind of banal at best. I already know this stuff. But I see this as a solution to the third shaker problem, or the mystery of the kingdom of punt. You know, information that's common knowledge in the current day, but could eventually be lost time because, well, who would bother to record something so obvious? Until it falls out of the zeitgeist anyways. Nobody knows for sure what was in that third table shaker, nor where ancient Egypt's trade partner, the Kingdom of Punt, is. To that end, on to something that has bothered me for a while, and will probably continue to bother me for as long as I live. Anime as a genre. It's an assumption that can lead to some wild false equivalencies, such as lumping something like Dragon Ball in with Hakame and Mikochi, which is further to say nothing about how anime has changed over the decades. 
Cyberpunk and dystopian futures were explored a lot in many 80s and 90s anime, but it wasn't until the 2020s that that genre cropped up again. But I digress. As of writing this script, the price of getting Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition is 30 US dollars. About standard price for a non D&D RPG. One book, all you need, half the price of one of the core books for D&D. Though, Big Eye Small Mouth Naked doesn't add much value. $18, 12 less, for what's more or less the same game, just with less exposition. So if you're already pretty familiar with tabletop RPGs and must have Big Eye Small Mouth, go with Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition Naked. But somebody newer to the RPG hobby could still benefit from the full version. Love it or hate it, it's still the standard Big Eye Small Mouth experience, which is not something I personally need anymore. I kind of wish I found these games more interesting, but the current RPG climate is one where generic or fantasy-themed anime games just don't really do anything for me which is also to say nothing of how I loathe to use the word anime as a genre. For fantasy, we've got the Konosuba tabletop role-playing game, which is pretty close to the standard fantasy tabletop RPG you would find in Japan, and I can assure you it's different enough from the likes of D&D to warrant picking up. For generic settings, GURPS is still supported if you want something more detailed, and there's also no shortage of rules-like games with generic or specific themes, anime-related or otherwise. And if you absolutely must have an anime-themed game, OVA by Wise Turtle Publishing is my recommendation there. It's rules-light and has somewhat unique rule set that isn't complicated for the sake of complication or uniqueness. Get Big Eye Small Mouth 4th Edition if you're just a fan of Big Eye Small Mouth or have money to burn and curiosity is sate. Otherwise, you can pretty safely pass it by. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting or informative, give me one of those thumbs up likes. And maybe consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing about other unusual tabletop RPGs, or checking out some of my other videos. With all that said, I am Aron Dershedel, and I will see you all next time.